And so I'm wondering what your response to, to a coach would be that maybe has that struggle of like feeling like they need to be physically with their players to coach. You don't really have to have a team to make an impact and uh, you don't really have to have all the other elements you've mentioned. Hey team, welcome to Kick It Here uh, with Eli. I'm Eli Dent, your host. I'm so excited to launch this with a very special guest. We're going through tricky times here, especially in the sports world and in youth sports in particular. So I'm really excited to be able to share the story of this individual we have here. He's from Mombasa, Kenya. Um, he played college soccer here in the US, professional soccer. He's now a youth soccer coach, an app creator, and an owner of an after school um, elementary school program for preschool and elementary schools uh, in South Carolina. He's also just a genuine and passionate guy, and I'm just so excited for him to, to share his story with you. Uh, this is Coach David Kenga. David, thank you so much for being here and sharing your story with all of us. I know there's lots of parents and coaches out there right now who are looking for ways to keep their teams engaged and their players engaged, so I think you're going to help a lot of people. Thank you. Thank you. appreciate that. So obviously you were my coach. So just to give a little background, you were my coach uh, for, for a little while there um, with South Carolina United Bantams. So we had some, some traveling up to Cincinnati, I think was my first game with you guys. And um, it was a great, great experience for me as a player and developing. Um, and then from that, I've been able to, to watch your journey as a coach, you know, develop and a lot of things through the past few years. Um, you know, and one thing that I've really kind of come to admire about you is you're, you know, always looking to innovate and try and bring value in new ways to the soccer community. Um, and I'm just wondering if that's something you've always, you know, kind of been, you know, in terms of always trying to find and innovate and find solutions for people, or if that's something more recently that you've kind of come to. Yeah, well, first of all, thank you, Eli, for having me here. It's really a pleasure, you know. Um, uh, first of all, um, from my background, you know, I was a biology major and uh, also just that uh, scientific background of just being, wanting to know more, trying to find solutions for problems, you know, has kind of been engraved uh, on me over time. You know, I was a teacher, science lab teacher for four years and being a teacher actually helps a lot when you bring that kind of uh, same mentality when you come into coaching, you know, um, always trying to do my best to make sure that I find ways and solve problems to um, be able to create a fantastic uh, performance environment for all my players to actually enjoy the beautiful game of soccer, you know, and um, I look at it, you know, as a coach, I put myself as a player. Would I want to play for myself? If I show up to practice, would I be looking forward to doing what I'm about to make the kids do, you know? So I just want to have them, um, look forward to coming to practice, you know, I understand they're in school the whole day, uh, receiving infraction, uh, instruction, and this is their only uh, time, one, one hour, one and a half, that they have some time to actually express themselves, and I want them to have fun and um, live with a smile when they leave the soccer field, and uh, I think that's what um, is very critical for uh, youth soccer development, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I know that, um, you know, just from the past that you had spoken about, um, you know, your experience as well from kind of a scientific background and like your family was kind of had that background as well. Can you maybe share a little bit about that? And maybe that's how it impacted your coaching? Yeah, so my, my story is kind of very interesting because uh, my dad was a doctor, you know, and um, my mom, uh, she worked in the health department. But uh Funny enough, you know, she never wanted me to play soccer. You know, she never wanted me to play soccer. She was like, no, you got to stay in school. You got to be a doctor just like your dad. And, you know, it's just one of those things. Um, uh, my dad uh, passed away, like, uh, during my senior year of high school. And uh, my mom was very strict. She basically raised me from a very underprivileged um, family. You know, we didn't have the luxuries most American kids have to play club soccer. She didn't have any money. Um, I had to walk and um, uh, play with our soccer cleats, you know. I wore, actually, I wore my um, first soccer cleats um, when I was 14 years old, you know. And I started playing since I was three. Wow. For, for about 11 years, you know, it was just like bare feet. Um, I'd make sure I finished my homework whenever, before my mom comes, and I'd sneak out and play for two, three hours before she comes back. and act like nothing's happened, you know, part of being a kid, you know, and um, so just that passion, you know, I didn't have to have a coach tell me or somebody tell me, hey, you need to go work on this, you know, I just wanted to 
go outside and play and uh, kids in my neighborhood would do that and uh, sometimes we'd walk six, seven miles to just go play another other town, you know, just uh, barefoot and it's just um, just a passion. I think uh, that was the difference for me. I really knew what I wanted to be, but uh, my mom was like, you know, hey, you got to be a doctor, you got to go to med school. And um, so it was, um, it was, it was good. It was good. It was a, a good upbringing. It made me appreciate a lot because uh, eventually when I actually was able to achieve the dreams I wanted to achieve, you know, I had, um, I didn't take anything for granted, you know, so. Yeah, absolutely. That's amazing. I mean, into that, actually, this kind of is a great segue because um, I was hoping to maybe learn a little bit more and maybe share a little bit more with our audience about, um, you know, what you're doing back home in Kenya. I know that you, um, you had uh, started a foundation uh, using soccer as kind of a tool for progress. So can you share a little bit why, you know, what inspired you to really do that? Yeah, so I, um, I obviously got an opportunity to come to America to play college soccer and uh, had a fantastic time at Winthrop University under Rich Posipanko. And um, it was really great. My It took me six years since I came. And uh, by the way, when I told my mom I'm coming to America to play soccer, she bought me a one-way ticket and said, don't ever come back here with, until you have a degree, you know. Cause wow. Um, so those kind of things, you know, she was very strict. She knew what she wanted out of life for me. and. Um, which was the best, you know, just get an education, make something of myself. And um, yeah. that was the best thing she did because if um, she had given me a return ticket, you know, with the culture shock and everything, the change of food, I would have probably been on my next flight back home and given up the big dream, you know. Right. So I stayed here six years and then I went back, you know, uh, best time. I almost, I mean, I was so, it was so emotional for my family to see me, you know, now I'd, um, finished college and uh, I was looking forward to seeing most of my friends and hang out and catch up and maybe have a um, soccer game, you know, pick up soccer game and kind of relieve the, the times, you know, when we were young. But I was, uh, was really sad, you know, to see most of them. They were in drugs and uh, some of them had passed away and some just they were doing things the wrong way, you know. And so it kind of prompted me and I said, you know, hey, I'm from a town that soccer is so big and, um, the situation in Africa, you know, the so corrupt, the federation is not doing a lot to help the kids, you know. And so I said, you know, I want to do something for them, you know. And so I started this, uh, I started, I started this foundation with my uncle uh, in Chicago, uh, Mike Chitavi, that I think you've met before. And um, we started um, collaborating with like uh, Passback U.S. Soccer Foundation Passback program, where we collect gently used soccer equipment and send it to Kenya to underprivileged communities and, and to give these kids a dream, a hope, try to empower them. And also, most of them have given uh, hope. They're like, man, I want to be a professional, but how can I do that? And so just using me as a model, I'm the same kid who didn't wear shoes for 13 years and still was able to uh, defy all these odds and um, make it to where I am right now. So if I can do it, you can definitely do it. You know. And now when I did it, I didn't have um, I didn't have a David Kanga or somebody from America helping me bringing me all this stuff. So you try to tell this kids you have an edge. You have somebody who cares and uh, wants you to uh, to guide you to be the best. You know, so so it's really a great program. I do that. I go to Kenya maybe say, uh, two or two three times a year. I collect a lot of uh, soccer equipment. South Carolina United here helped me a lot uh, with a lot of um, donations. You know. Um, so I checked them there, and um, the funny thing about that is uh, recently, uh, when my dad passed away in 2000, uh, it's customary in Kenya. <coughs> Excuse me, it's customary in Kenya for the dad to leave some land for the son so that you can start a family. You know, when um, when you are ready to uh, <coughs> to start a family, uh, to build a house, and you know, so that you can extend the the village. So he had bought me about three and a half acres and um, I'd never done anything to it. It was just a piece of land fenced and was there. And so my mom called me and he was like, Hey, there's some kids over there playing soccer, you know, and um, I think I'm going to chase them. You know, they don't, they need to be in school, you know, typical my mom, you know? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, was like, man. I told my wife, he was like, man, I got a, 
I gotta do something for these kids, man. You know, I wanna do something. You know, I'd love to build a house, but I don't really stay there anymore. I wanna, I wanna do something bigger than just me building a house. I wanna build something that's gonna benefit the whole community. So I was like, all right, let's do it, you know. And um, so I have this dream of building a soccer stadium for them, you know, a soccer facility. And uh, so amazing I, December, and uh, we started clearing the land. We had a big game. I had. Uh, a lot of people donate a lot of stuff. Uh, a lot of schools, Chapin High School here in Colombia, Karen Newman here in Colombia, Dutch Fork High School, you know, a lot of soccer powerhouses here donating a lot of stuff for me to take back to Kenya. Did a small tournament with a neighboring team that was a rival. And uh, we had some nets and uh, basically built goals. And it was really uh, nice to see the community actually buying in into that and seeing, man, this is for our kids. They'll get to not engage in other activities and uh so right now it's running um obviously being affected with this covid 19 stuff but uh it's going well um we've set up the foundation um for it to actually uh uh to to be a good project for the community and um i'm hoping uh by the end of this year you know we'll have put um some nice um equipment around it just to make it a really state-of-the-art uh, facility you know you know in a poor community like that. so it's a dream of mine you know I, I, I want to do this for my dad you know I hope uh, whoever he is you know you can see man um, he was a doctor you know doing a lot of service for the community there and I want to use my uh, gift that God gave me to actually have the community with sports you know so that's amazing. You know, it's it as as you kind of share these stories, it's so um you just have such a a really amazing heart for for trying to give back and support. And and it's amazing to see that just from my, you know, perspective of being kind of growing up where I grew up and and yeah. it's it's like you you're seeking for ways that you can constantly bring that community and make it stronger and i just think it's uh it's just amazing to to watch and uh and so i'm i'm excited to see it grow and and hopefully rebound and you know after this whole covid um you know thing goes away um speaking a, a, about that you know we're the whole world is really going through challenges right now um and you know I'd be curious to hear what your feedback is from a, from a coaching standpoint um, in terms of what you see your, your players' biggest challenges are right now. And then also, you know, maybe what their parents are challenging. Yeah, I think uh, the biggest challenge for them, you know, they're used to having practice every day, you know, um, especially now that this uh, pandemic has hit in the spring where they're practicing three times a day, three times a week for club probably uh, two, the other two days they're doing uh, high school and then they're having games over the weekend. So it's a full schedule for them over the week, but now it's uh, been watered down to nothing, you know, no games and uh, not a regular practice. And so I think uh, it's a challenge, you know, for them to actually just um, adapt to this new norm that they're not used to. So um, the challenge for parents is trying to keep these kids active, you know, because I'm sure they don't want to just give them a video game and sit on the couch the whole day, you know? And so it's, um, it's been a challenge for them. And I think, uh, that's where, um, <clears throat> we as coaches, you know, come in and play a major role and what can we do? You know, I know we're not in really club season, but, um, it's about what you do during these times that will really, um, uh, build trust and great relationships between, um, you and your players and the membership in general, you know? Absolutely. So, so what are some things that you're, um, that you're doing right now with your team to kind of build that trust during this time? Um, I think um, what I've done, I've actually designed uh, some workouts. Um, I've shared, I've talked to some coaches, you know, in, uh, in other top clubs, uh, asked them, hey, what are you guys doing with the players? And kind of just share some ideas and put together with mine. And uh, I, at the end of the day, I know my players, I know what they need. So I've designed a workout that I send them. Um, I send them every week, and uh, also the club, our club here, South Carolina area, has their own um, uh, fitness app that they use, and the kids can go and log in and do uh, certain challenges and all that every day. And so it's uh, I've made it a 
mandatory for my players to actually do that. And I have a way I can actually go in and see how many hours they've spent in that. And then uh, personally, I've just sent them a Google sheet, uh, Google Drive sheet and said, hey, every day, whatever you do, if you take your dog for a walk, whatever, I need to know you're doing something, you know, um, just sit around. If you don't log in what you're doing, I'm assuming you're just sitting around and um, it's not going to be good when we return. I, need, I mean, you got to put the, make them accountable, you know. So I, um, I'm doing a lot of that. And uh, on the business side, you know, uh, I run a, after one of the biggest here after school soccer programs. And uh, we have over, um, a following of over 500 kids. And so all these kids are wondering, they're just sitting at home and what can I do to help them, you know especially um, now that we are not even meeting to do any small group or anything. So that's where um, the app comes, plays a big role now, you know. I'm able to connect to them uh, through my YouTube channel. So every week, uh, as you can see, my social media, um, on Instagram and Facebook, I'm posting challenges, and it's been fantastic. You know? And um, even uh, adding more excitement, introducing the kick it, it's been it's, yeah, it's been fantastic and kids that want to do things that are fun like that and I appreciate you guys creating such a product, you know. Um, Absolutely. So it's a good challenge for them. Uh, I'm giving them prizes, you know, uh, and uh, keeping them engaged. I mean, it was, this thing was meant for the kids, but now you can see even moms are doing it, you know, moms and, you know, uh, doing it and it's like siblings who probably don't get along at home are like, yeah, let's do it for this, you know. So yeah. at the end of the day, you know, I um I'm glad I'm impacting, you know, um, more than what I thought this was going to serve, you know, so. Absolutely. You know, it's amazing that to just be able to watch as well. I mean, there's a, you know, I'm, I'm a very, just through my generation and the timing of social media and apps, you know, our younger generations are so involved in that. And I think I've, you know, just through some of my coaches that have coached me, you know, when I was going up, there's a resistance there, it seems, for those coaches to get involved on these platforms. And it's, I think, such an opportunity for them to connect more on a level that these kids understand, right? Like these kids want to communicate with you on TikTok or communicate with you on Instagram and try and have a relationship. And I think you've done just such an amazing job of being there and present on those platforms for them to engage with, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's been it's been great, man. I I tell you, if you asked me four months ago about TikTok, I'd be like, "There's no way you're getting me on there." <laughs> it's fun, you know. My kids start getting me on there, and then I started seeing soccer stuff. I was like, "Man, this will be cool if I actually do it," you know. And um, it's really engaging, you know. It's really good, and you you gotta adapt. At the end of the day, you have to adapt to the times and the millennial era. What do these What do these um, what does the population like that you serve? You know, what, what do the youth like? You know, yes. Um, so it's uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty amazing. You know, I'm, I'm excited. You know, that's awesome. Yeah, no, those challenges have been really great to watch. And actually, at the end of this, I want you to share with everybody where um, where they can follow along and get involved on this because I think it's a just a great tool. Um, but so on the on the flip side of you know, one thing that I've noticed is that you know, there's a lot of physical um, challenges and a lot of physical things that players can be doing, running, you know, um, lots of core exercises and those types of things to physically keep them fit. And I'm wondering if there's things that you see from a coaching standpoint that can keep players sharp mentally, because, you know, that's also such a really important thing. And being away from your teammates and away from your coach physically might play, you know, we've, might leave you at a disadvantage tactically to understand kind of how do they develop. And so I'm wondering if there's things that you've been able to kind of um, inspire your kids to do from a mental level to prepare. Yeah, I think it's important to understand that there are different uh, aspects of the game, the technical, the tactical, you know, and so all these, you know, the core workout and all that, they're really good technical exercises, but also we have to keep the players engaged on a tactical perspective, you know, to challenge them mentally. So one thing that I've done uh, and I think is a good resource uh, that our club is uh, trying to do is uh, introducing, you know, um, video analysis, you know, and we record all our games. And so uh, it's very important for the kids, you know, to have this available. Now you give them assignments and say, hey, 
uh, can you go and watch your game and um, see what are some things you need to improve on? What are some things you did well with, you know, and then um, give them some pointers. And then now you foster <coughs> an environment where you're actually leading the player. You're not telling him, this is what you need to do. This is what you need to do. Um, I do a lot of evaluations all year with key, uh, with players. And, you know, the hardest thing for me is to tell the man, a guy, uh, there's a player who's beating you so much on your side or you are doing this wrong. At the end of the day, you sit with the players, they kind of feel you're making this stuff up. So if you have video to actually show them and say, hey, I'm not lying. This is what is really happening. But this is how you can fix it, you know, uh, and help them through that learning process, you know, and then they see from a tactical perspective the decisions they're making. Are they correct? You know, how do they um, relate to your style of play and also um, just your uh, your culture in your club and what you really uh, expect all the teams to, uh, and all the players to play, you know, so it's very, that's very amazing. Cool. You know, that's something that I think has been, um, hopefully we'll see more and more of that, that you're implementing kind of that, you know, what, let's watch some film and let's let's retake this and because I, I mean I know I, when I was a player that was one thing that I would always kind of if my coach had a critical point I'd be like well kind of like he kind of you know maybe he's right maybe he's wrong yes, yes. but but by being able to incorporate that kind of technology and then players can look at it and take maybe take out their emotional and just see what really went in what happened you know and then they can interpret it best um, I hope that that becomes more and more a part because I think it's important you know especially as you watch like basketball and baseball, I mean, statistics and film and football. I mean, these are so, these sports have really, have a really strong roadmap in terms of how do we improve, you know? So it's, um, it's yeah, so great to hear very, that you're doing it's that. Very, it's very key. I think even um, right now it's a tough time because there's no sports going on. So like during the season, what I would do is, hey, uh, I would look, I'm a big follower of the Major League Soccer, you know, and um, Obviously, 80% of most of the players that I coach, you ask them about a player in each team and they don't know. No one follows the MLS, but I think it's very critical for them to actually, this is your league. You have a yeah. better chance of actually making this league other than thinking of other clubs in Europe, you know, because right. you know, you've traveled. In Europe, it's a different ball game, you know. Right. Chance here. So, I'd find a game that's going on, big rivalries, you know, Seattle, Portland, you know, LA Galaxy. Red Bull and all that, and say, hey, uh, let's all watch this game this weekend, and then we'll, I'll send a set, set of questions next week and see what you do. And uh, yeah, so trying to engage them like that, get them to watch more soccer, you know, and um, it's really it's really important, you know. That's great. So um, you know, one thing that I've seen kind of floating on the internet, and especially just through our, you know, through a lot of our community, we've got coaches, you know, and some of these coaches are like. Well, I don't re like, and I know personally, I mean, I've got a, you know, you coach them as well, TK Abdurrahman, who's a coach uh, now in, in South Carolina and in Charleston. And, um, you know, he, we had a conversation the other day of like, but how do you stay sharp as a coach? You know, because there might be some coach that says, okay, well, I have a team, but I have to have a team and a field to be a coach and to coach. And so I'm wondering what your response to, to a coach would be that maybe has that struggle of like, feeling like they need to be physically with their players to coach? I think uh, you don't really have to have a team to make an impact and uh, you don't really have to have all the other elements you've mentioned, you know. I think, uh, take for example this time, you know, obviously you can't go and do a lot of group training, but you can still lead the player from off the field, you know, um, having this constant communication with the players, you know. Use Zoom, FaceTime, you know. And find out, you know, you've given these uh, players some um, assignments to do, you know, and uh, you have workouts and, you know, check on them. I check I check on mine every two weeks, you know, just to I have a Google Drive and uh, see where they sign up for a time they're going to call me. And we have takes like three minutes, three, five minutes. But to, the, to them, you know, at the end of the day, hopefully it means something that actually took my time and actually I'm keeping them accountable and it's all. Hey, how are you doing? Is there anything I can help you? you have any questions about the workouts? Are they good? Are they uh, boring? Or would you like something more challenging than that? And some say they want something challenging, and that's when I say, okay, I'll send you something different. 
because you realize as a coach, all the players are different. They have different skill, different physical ability, and um, it's really key right now to connect to them. You know, you don't have to be on the field and coach and give away instructions. And uh, I think also this is a great time for a coach to actually connect with other coaches and see, hey, um, and try, start, start thinking about next season, you know, what are other coaches doing to prepare for that and exchange ideas, you know, and that's how I keep myself uh, engaged in the game, you know, I've uh, been blessed with a great network of coaches that I can call uh, on the club and professional level just to kind of figure out, hey, what are you guys doing like this, what do I do in this situation, and I think that's how we grow as coaches, you know, um, so I think it's very, it's very key um, to do that, I think, uh, you don't really need a team to be on the field to actually make an impact. You know, it's such a such a great point. I don't know if you if you had watched, but and when Mikel Arteta took over as a manager at Arsenal, yes. obviously he was coming under under a, an enormous <clears throat> amount of pressure. Big club, really struggling. Um, and there was a question that was posed to him, and it was, um, you know, how do you expect? to prove when he didn't, when Mikel at the time didn't really have, didn't have any head coach experience or, you know, as a, as a full-time, you know, the head manager, how do you, you know, win trust of your players that you can lead them in a direction that they can win? And his response was, I have to connect with them on an emotional, like I have to win their heart and I have to be able to let, they have to feel that they can trust me because I, I invested in what's best for them as an individual and then he said once once we can get to a place where they trust me as an individual and having a genuine interest in their success then we can start working towards a goal and I think that that is such a strong parallel to what you just said you know yes, you're yes, yes. you have to this is a great opportunity to connect with players on that emotional level yeah I think it's 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 spot on I think that's what sometimes we forget it's like okay season is over I'll see you at tryouts or I'll see you at the, you know, first right. and in between there's no really connection. And um, then you start wondering, man, why are the players not responding to my training or whatever, you know, because you are basically a stranger to them, you know, you see them two, three times a week, you need to actually invest. And if you really care for their success, genuinely, you know, you really, um, you start to see players who want to play for you, want to perform, um, Awesome. and look forward to actually enjoying the game so I think it's it's very it's very good to hear that even at a professional level there's a coach who actually invests in that because um, generally you think like man you are a professional it's like hey you either do this or you know you're out but just right. that is uh, that there's a coach out there in the professional level in one of the uh, top clubs and Trying to actually go that deep to connect with the players, you know, it's really, uh, it's like music to my ears, you know. Yeah, absolutely. So on that note, I'm going to fire some quick questions at you. And then, yes. um, and then I want to, you know, before we wrap up, I want you to tell us where, where to follow you and what are some projects that you're working on that we can help support. Um, so here's just a couple of questions. So, um, you know, as a soccer coach, and obviously a, a fan of the game as a player yourself, who was your idol as a player when you were growing up? Um, when I was growing up, Thierry Henry, you know, he was, um, Absolutely. He was a winger when I played, you know, um, had a little speed on me. So I um, I watched him, you know, uh, when he played for France, he had just come out, man. He was just so fun to watch. And then uh, when best day of my life is when I heard he's going to Arsenal. And I was a big Arsenal supporter since I was young. So Love it. basically looked up to him and... Um, He's been an inspirational man, one of the best players to ever play the game, you know. And uh, even when he came to the MLS, it's too bad I didn't get to catch his game. But um, it's he's, he's a fun guy to watch. And now just seeing him coach and just how much passion he puts into it, you know, it's really um, it's really great. Yeah, he he was actually the one of my favorite players as well. I think he uh, he actually won. I I wasn't an Arsenal fan really until. Until he was, uh, he was at Arsenal, Arsenal. and then I've been a, an Arsenal fan ever since. So, yeah. what a great, what a great player. Um, okay, so favorite, play okay, and then what's your? So you spoke about MLS a little bit and kind of the importance of the U.S. here and, and players here in the U.S. getting involved and following the U.S. or following the MLS as a league. Um, I know that you've got some teammates that play in the MLS. Who's um, 
who can you speak a little bit about that? And then also I would love to hear like, who do you think is, is the major league soccer team to watch in the next season that comes up? Yeah, I think, um, obviously, um, I, I was blessed to play with a lot of players, you know, and, um, but I think one of the ones that really connected with, you know, you've met Ozzy Alonso, you know, so what a fantastic story, you know, about him. And, um, I think we go way back, uh, back at Charleston Barry, you know, we, Shared a lot of uh, times him being my roommate, and you know I never think you know this guy just came from Cuba and he'll uh, he'll blow up so big, you know. And so it's uh it's been really great, you know. It's there are very few pros like Ozzy Alonso, you know. He um, as big of a name he is, you know. He never forget forgot those times that you know the people who were with him when he was, you know, um, he was just a USL player, you know. And uh, we really kept in touch ever since, you know, I was in Kenya actually when he signed for Seattle Sounders, you know, and he actually sent me a text and said, hey, bro, I'm changing my number, but this is my number. If you ever need anything, just let me know. And um, yeah, that was, uh, and ever since, man, we've kept in touch. Um, I've been able to go watch him play yeah, in Seattle for the 10 years he was there and now he's in Minnesota and um, uh, he's having a great time, you know, and um, other players, you know, Lawrence Olum, we grew up, uh, we played together in Kenya and uh, we've connected here. Actually, when I played professional, me and him were the only Kenyans playing uh, professionally in America. So it was kind of a good rivalry wow. for Portland and I played for Charleston. And so we'd go and um, we'd have some good, uh, good uh, rivalries, you know, with me and him. And then... Um, um, recently, you know, I've been able to meet, through these players. I've met other players. You know, I don't know if you know. There's a Kenyan actually for Seattle Sounders, Andwala Buana. You know, he's from Kenya. Yeah. Oh yeah. wow! I so didn't know he was we, from Kenya. Yeah, actually, uh, we have a big challenge next week. You know, that he's gonna yeah get involved, man. So it's uh, oh, that's awesome. Watchman, very young and very entertaining, man. I think it's gonna be the next big thing in Seattle. You know, so hopefully um, we do that. But just keeping these. Uh, it's a genuine relationship I have with these guys and, you know, they know what I bring to the table and they know what I'm about. So it's uh, so those guys that I can call and say, hey, this is what I'm doing for the kids. And uh, if you have time, I know you're busy. Could you help? And they always, you know, they never think twice, you know, whenever I do that. So it's, uh, it's a blessing to have guys like that who are playing at the next level and have my players um, embrace that and follow them and, as role models and see if they can get to that level, you know? Absolutely. Well, I think, I think it's a testament to the fact that you're, you're so, you know, passionate and driven to help and, and help from a place of, you know, their genuine interest in, you know, investing in the youth. I think that's a huge piece of it. So, well, that's yeah. actually, this is a, a perfect segue because um, that's an exciting thing that you had just touched on. Share, I would love to like at this point, like if you can share, you know, what are some projects you're working on, uh, where people can follow along your journey, and if there's coaches or players that they can learn from you, where, where should we send them? Yeah, I think uh, obviously on social media, that's what I'm really big into right now. I actually manage it on my own and uh, with some help from some, actually the people who help me with social media are all high school kids, you know, millennials, you know, I yes into them because I, I, I mean, it's funny. I text them, I say, hey, what would you put with this? What, what, um, what caption would you put with this? What would the, you know, these guys, I mean, there's so much talent in the millennial, you know, we give them a lot of, um, we don't give them a lot of credit, but man, there's some creative kids, you know, I've, uh, most of them do my videos and um, help me with a lot of their social media. So on Facebook, I'm on Elite Soccer Training LLC and um, also have an outreach company, which is a nonprofit, which is um, geared toward helping underprivileged kids here in Colombia and also internationally in Kenya. It's called Elite Soccer Outreach. So all the both pages I know on Facebook and Instagram uh, for the Elite Soccer. It's elite, at Elite Soccer Training CO. And then uh, obviously my personal page, um, David underscore Kanga 21 uh, on Instagram. Um, obviously, uh, best way to connect with all that, we bring that all together. Uh, it's compiled in the app, you know. So if you're on Google Play or Apple Store, it's free to download it's, uh, Elite Soccer training and uh, you can connect with us um, to connect you. I actually put some videos, you know, I'm always creating uh, content to put on the app to keep it going. So parents can actually 
see a skill, uh, once you subscribe, you actually get push notifications. Hey, there's a new video, there's a new skill, and they can actually access it from their phone. So it's kind of like a walking billboard, you know, and they can um, access all these things. And um, uh, it's actually uh, our YouTube channel as well. You can go there. There's a really great video. If you have about four minutes for to see something that will change your life, you know, uh, it's uh, you just type on YouTube Elite Soccer Training Outreach. Uh, this is a video done by one of the best media companies in Kenya. It's called Tony Scott Productions. I mean, it's unbelievable what they did uh, about my story and what I do in Kenya. So, be a good story. Check it out to kind of see what we're doing uh, locally and also internationally. So, awesome! That's amazing. David, thank you so much for joining us and, and just for the opportunity to share your story with everybody. I'm, I'm so excited to hear. Uh, I know that this is going to help a lot of people, especially during this time, looking for things to do um, and uh, just trying to get more involved with the game. So I can't thank you enough for joining us. Um, thank you so much for being on. Yeah, thank you so much for kicking it with me, man. Yes, awesome. Let's, keep, let's uh, continue thanks. to kick it together. And, um, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll speak soon. Uh, thanks.